So now let me talk about another general consideration within the antimicrobials which is called as the post antibiotic effect. If you take the post antibiotic effect, what does this mean? After exposure of an organism to the antibiotic, its growth stops. Right? Once the organism is exposed to the antibiotic, its growth is stopped. Right? After exposure of the organism, right, after exposure of the organism to the antibiotic, the growth of the organism stops, right, the growth of the organism stops. Next, now, if you take this particular organism, right, when this organism is placed in the antibiotic free medium, right, if this organism, if it is placed in the antibiotic free medium, the growth of the organism resumes, but only after a lag period, right? The growth of the organism resumes, but only after a lag period, right? But only after a lag period. Is that clear? So this signifies that the inhibitory effect of antibiotic is present even when their concentration is below the minimum inhibitory concentration all right so this lag period this signifies that right this lag period it signifies that even when concentration Right, even when concentration is below, right, even when concentration is present below the minimum inhibitory concentration, the antibiotic effect is present. Exactly, I'll repeat again. Now, the presence of the lag period signifies that the inhibitory effect of the antibiotic is present even when their concentration is below the minimum inhibitory concentration. And this period is known as the post antibiotic effect, right? This period is known as post antibiotic effect. All right. Now, now let me tell you the post antibiotic effect against the gram positive and as well as gram negative organisms. So before that, let me explain once again. Once the organism is exposed to the antibiotic, the growth of the organism stops. But once you keep this organism in the antibiotic free medium, the growth of the organism resumes after a lag period. This signifies that the inhibitory effect of the antibiotic is present even when their concentration is below the minimum inhibitory concentration. This particular period is known as the post antibiotic effect. All right. Now, now let me tell you the post antibiotic effect for gram positive and gram negative organisms. You take most of the antimicrobials. Right, if you see the most of the antimicrobials, they have a long post antibiotic effect against the gram positive bacteria. Right, they have 
long post antibiotic effect that is minimum of more than 1.5 hours for gram positive bacteria is that clear next the other important thing is like we have a group of antibiotics that is gram negative organisms all right now we have certain group of antibiotics where they have a long post antibiotic effect against the gram negative bacteria now let me tell you right now let me tell you what are those group of antibiotics which have long post antibiotic effect right long post antibiotic effect for the gram negative bacteria right this will be asked as multiple choice questions example they include carbapenems right that is imipenem and as well as meropenem and even your doripenem so carbapenems next the other group of drugs are the drugs affecting the protein synthesis right the drugs affecting the protein synthesis the drugs affecting the protein synthesis they include amino glycosides right they include chloramphenicol and they include tetracyclines right next the other group of antibiotics which have long post antibiotic effect against the gram negative bacteria is the organisms which will inhibit the dna synthesis right the antibiotics which will inhibit the dna synthesis now what are those antibiotics which will inhibit the dna synthesis they include one is your quinolones right one is your quinolones and the other one what we have is rifampicin right which is a first line anti tubercular drug so remember these group of antibiotics they have long post antibiotic effect against the gram negative bacteria all right next now you take this particular rifampicin right rifampicin is a first line anti tubercular drug remember rifampicin will prolong the post antibiotic effect of the isoniazid right rifampicin will prolong the post antibiotic effect of isoniazid right isoniazid is also your first line anti tubercular drug so because rifampicin will prolong the post antibiotic effect of the isoniazid this isoniazid can be given thrice weekly when given in combination with rifampicin so this can be given okay so this can be given thrice weekly when given in combination with rifampicin in short course chemotherapy of tuberculosis all right so these are few points about the post antibiotic effect remember once the organism is exposed to the antibiotic the growth of the organism stops but the same organism if it is placed in antibiotic free medium the growth of the organism resumes after a lag period and this signifies that even when the concentration is below the minimum inhibitory concentration the growth of the organism is inhibited and this particular lag period whatever is there is called as the post antibiotic effect now most of the antimicrobials they have long post antibiotic effect that is more than 1.5 hours for gram positive bacteria whereas if you take for the gram negative bacteria there are certain group of antibiotics which will prolong the post antibiotic effect of the gram negative bacteria 
they include carbapenems and the drugs which will inhibit the protein synthesis like aminoglycosides chloramphenicol and tetracyclines and the drugs which will inhibit the dna synthesis that is quinolones and as well as rifampicin and another important point is this particular rifampicin will prolong the post antibiotic effect of the isoniazid and that is the reason why this isoniazid can be given thrice weekly when given in combination with rifampicin in short course chemotherapy of tuberculosis